Hey, I'm Cameron, and this is Leah. We're going to tell you all about the traditional practice of hunting with pointers, aren't we? Let's go. So this beautiful pup here is Leah. She's a one-year-old English setter. Now, the tradition of using English setters to hunt for ground game like woodcock, uh, partridge and snipe has been done for hundreds of years uh, and it's a really traditional hunting art. The dogs don't touch the birds at all, they don't hurt them in any way, they're simply there to help us locate them for the hunters to, to come in afterwards. But the way in which they work is beautiful and they're so well trained, so clever, um, that the dogs do all the work themselves and the hunters that are with them just help them by, by keeping them on the right track and directing them a little bit. So. Leah's sort of in the middle of her training at the moment. We're going to go out today with another younger pup who's not done any at all, and Anya, who's our older uh, pointer. She's a bit better. So hopefully the older pointer is going to keep them right, and the younger dogs are going to get to sort of get a little bit of training, a little bit of sense of what it's actually like to hunt in the woodlands. We're not going to take any guns or anything like that today. We're just going out purely to see what we can see. And that's mostly what we do with these dogs. We take them out just to sort of get them used to the natural environment, to get them hunting. It's what they're bred to do. They've got these absolutely beautiful noses here. They're so clever. They've got great eyesight as well. So for when they're stalking through the undergrowth, they're able to see and smell creatures, um, you know, for, 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 for hundreds of meters. They cover so much ground. A trio of these dogs could cover miles and miles worth of ground and find everything that's in it, um, you know, over the course of a day. And that's what they do. They're really clever and well-bred for that. Once they then find that the animals they're looking for, they stop and that's when the famous pointer um, happens. The tail comes up straight as a die, their noses go down, they go down their haunches like a tiger and they stop through the undergrowth looking to find the, the birds they've snared. At what, which point the hunters will close in on them and uh, that's when they'll give them a flush so the birds will bar, the dogs will bark and they'll give a, brush, a brief rush towards the undergrowth not looking to catch the birds just to scare them up. And the birds will flash up into the air uh, and then the, obviously that's in prime position for the hunter. We're going to go and take you out today, explain what we do, how we train them, and also show you just how you hunt um, in the sort of traditional way with these beautiful, beautiful animals. Okay? So we've joined up with pointer experts Tony and Scott. We're going to head up along this field edge and then into some woodland at the far end that we have access to. Uh, we know it's absolutely teeming with grey partridge, woodcock and snipe. Um, so hopefully we, we, we flush some of them. There's also lots of pheasants and, and other word, uh, birds around, um, so the best we can. Although for the young dogs, it's all about getting them out and about and moving and running around, so it's less important uh, that they go for a specific target. Although we hope Anya, in particular, will sort of focus in on some woodcock or, or some partridge. We keep track of the dogs by using a GPS collar. It doesn't hurt the dog in any way, it's not a shock collar. All it does is beep occasionally to let us know where they are in the undergrowth, and also connects to a receiver that we carry that has a bright light on it that changes colours when the dog stops and then beeps as we get closer to let us know exactly where they are in the undergrowth. Yeah. So when an English setter hunts for game, there's several distinctive behaviours that are usually observed. It starts off with scenting. The English setter's hunting ability starts off with them smelling the environment around them. They use their keen senses to pick up scents left by game birds like woodcock, partridge or snipe. You'll then see the dogs quartering. They, you know, the breed is famous for this systematic and methodical pattern of covering terrain in sort of box shapes, moving forth across the ground in zigzag motions, covering a wide area while systematically sniffing out the scent of game. This is exacerbated uh, in their training, so we use positive recall that they'll go out and come back for a touch just to let us know that we're still here to support them and that they're not lost. And then they'll go away, come back, go away and come back, and you can cover miles in your game areas. Uh, with these dogs. Scott and Tony spot a buzzard in the field. Uh, this tells us that the game animals are likely to be hidden more in the undergrowth in the woodland at the side, so we head in there with the dogs to see if we can find any. We hear Anya and Leah's collars uh, twigging with the GPS uh, ping, so we start to head in their direction. The dogs have just pointed something over here. We can see Anya here with her nose pointed in her, in her pointing position, spotting what we think is a woodcock initially, but eventually as we get closer, flush a pheasant which flies away over the head of us. And this replicates perfectly the hunting environment. We begin to head into another part of the woodland but spook some deer which run past us and out into the field. Uh, this area is now going to be totally full of scents of deer and that's going to overwhelm the young dogs 
uh, they're not going to be able to pick up the sense of the of the woodcock or, or anything like that without getting confused and running around. So we decide to call it for the day and take them back out to the field, run them a little bit longer and then take them up the road for a well-deserved dinner after lots and lots of praise.